Sassman Banking Group's full-year headline earnings per share slipped 16% to 297 cents. And joining us in studio for more detail on the numbers now is the company's CEO, Roland Sassoon. Thanks so much, uh, Roland, for joining us this afternoon. Well, with those the numbers, I've been through the headline figures that have come through, and it seems like it's been a bit of a challenging year for the company. Run us through the challenges that came to bear on the business over the past year. Well, um, the private equity area was obviously a problem area for us, and um, we've taken uh, quite significant steps to make sure that we don't have a repeat performance there. Um, <coughs> what we've had in private equity is a write-down of some of the investments and an impairment of, of some of the loans re relating to these investments. So, um, as I say, that has unfortunately resulted in that area um, their profits came down to, to almost nothing in, in the private equity area. And when you say steps being taken to mitigate against that moving forward, uh, you're actually looking at scaling down the group's investment within that asset class. Yes, we, we um, you know, as a banking group, it's, it's really um, not acceptable for us to have these, these risky uh, assets on our balance sheet. So we are now moving towards managed funds in regard to private equity and property equity. Mm -hmm. We already have a managed fund in Trinitas, which is a private equity fund, and we're going to be doing something similar uh, with property as well. Um, we will still retain certain uh, of these, prop these um, investments on our balance sheet, but uh, we will obviously be exiting these um, over a period of time in an orderly way. And um, we'll just retain a small investment in uh, private equity on balance sheet um, uh, because it's an important uh, service to our clients. Mm -hmm. We're also, we also reducing our overhead in that area and um, m the management of that area. And then consolidating on your business banking activities, which uh, seem to have provided much of the cushion. I mean, looking at the business banking division, it did particularly well. You've managed to grow uh, your loan book there, and your cr credit loss ratio has reduced from 1.2 to 0.7%. Yes. So significant stride being made in that regard. That's right. That is really our core business, is our uh, business banking area, where we provide finance for uh, debtors, uh, trade, and equipment. And that business has grown very nicely, about 23% growth in loans and advances. And uh, as you say, the credit losses have come down. We've got new management in there as well. Um, and we've really combined the equipment and the trade side together. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really looking good. So we're very excited about that. Uh, run us through how you're mitigating the risk of uh, growing loans and uh, reducing your uh, non-performing uh, you know, non loans at the same time. Because we've heard from the major banks that they've reported, yes, improvements in their impairment levels as well. But that has been more so as a result of them lending less. And uh, you know, the opposite mm. seems to be uh, holding true for you. Yes, well, look, obviously, we, we're very small compared to them. Uh, tiny and we can uh, you know there's a big pot of uh, there's a big bucket of business out there all we need is a couple of drops and uh, we get growth in our in our assets I think that the big thing here was the change in management you know we've we've really gone for a top level management and we're um, able to attract good business Sassman provides a great service I think that the big banks <laughs> tend to um, shy away these days from SME business. That is our bread and butter. And if, but with the new liquidity rules and the new uh, capital adequacy rules that are coming out, I think the big banks, as I say, are starting to put the brakes on a bit. Mm -hmm. As you can see, our capital adequacy is very high. Our liquidity is very high. So we're in a position to take on business. We've got a long uh, history of granting credit in that area. We've been doing it for mm -hmm. 20, 30 years, and I think uh, we're doing quite well at it. And where you are letting go of businesses or divisions that have been unprofitable, you're bulking up in other areas. Let's take a look at this announcement you've made today of the acquisition of a 42.9% stake in Altex listed uh, business services company, iQuad Group. Take us through the rationale there and how it's fitting into your strategy or your repositioning of the business right now. Yeah, so our strategy is to provide our clients with a start to finish service, that's what we call it, which enables us to be a partner beyond expectations. So um, iQuad really fills the gap as far as we're concerned. They provide the types of services that our target market is looking for. Um, we have importers, we have exporters, and we have local manufacturers. Mm -hmm. 
And for each of those segments, they have a whole lot of services uh, with regard to um, incentives, uh, customs duty drawbacks, um, permits, uh, which arise from exports, import duty permits. And um, they also provide DTI services uh, for the Department of Trade and Industry. So those services, together with our commercial services, which are freight and insurance broking, we see all that being housed together in I quote, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to offer really a unique service to our clients, which no bank in South Africa, and I don't know of any other bank in the world that provides such a, a company. And I see those services uh, being afforded through a creation of a separate commercial services division within the company. What funding mm. base are you looking at here? Because that would allude to the debt position you're putting uh, yourself into, taking into consideration that you've got those proposed Basel III requirements that will come to bear and requiring a certain capital base. Yes, well, I quote doesn't require capital and doesn't require funding because um, it pr just provides a service. It doesn't lend money as such. Where we see, uh, where it's really exciting for us, of course, is that we'll get a lot of introductions from their clients who will need finance. Mm -hmm. So we see this boosting our business banking area. In terms of uh, you know the capital you've got to venture down this path and for this acquisition itself, I mean, uh, you've mentioned in your report about diversification of your funding sources as well. So, yeah. so run us through that because uh, we're seeing an, a launch of a corporate bond program during uh, the new financial year. That's on the cards, but it's in a context where many have been talking about you know the appeal that government bonds have put on the table, uh, creating a crowding out effect for the corporate market. Yeah, well, we've done our homework, and uh, we believe that um, you know, with the rating that we that we are expecting on our corporate bond, that we will be able to raise a few hundred million rand as a corporate bond. Mm -hmm. This further diversifies our funding base because our funding is first of all we've got the high capital adequacy. Secondly, we've got deposits which have done very well in this last year, and thirdly, we've got the securitisation which has also done very well in this year. Um, and then, of course, we've also got interbank funding. So now we'll have corporate uh, bonds, and then we're also going to be attracting money from the DFIs. Yeah. We've been uh, given an approval in principle for about 350 million rand from three of the European uh, DFIs, which will add to what we have from the IFC of, of America. Mm -hmm. So that's another source of funding. Well, Roland, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. A pleasure chatting to you. Of course, Roland Sassoon is a CEO at Sassman and running us through the company's numbers, which were released for the full year this morning.